You know, our city really doesn't have a center. I mean, we had nowhere to go. No. And Dr. Wilkes was very insistent that we bring it into Myrtle Beach. Sure. So he opened up his fellowship hall, and he and I call it fellowship hall is town hall, and it works beautifully. That, that yeah. would. So, mm -hmm. for instance, some of the dates we see one coming up on September 18th, yes, that's which Dr. will be Richard repeated Collin. on uh, September 25th. Mm -hmm. Both, that's on the 25th down in Litchfield as well as in Myrtle? or No, the, um, Dr. Colin, Richard Collin, who's talking about a just war, are we to blame for the Middle East? Right. Yes, and if you know anything, he's a politics professor, so mm. it'll be quite uh, yes, amazing. Very yes, I'm a couple honored, months from now, that's honored that Richard would do this for us. Yeah. So he'll do um, one on campus, and then his follow up will be one down at Litchfield. Okay. Then in um, October, Dr. Dr. Julena Oxley and Dr. Dennis Earle are going to do um, something on feminist ethics, marriage, and work. Mm -hmm. we'll, we haven't found our tricky title for that one yet, but we will. <laughs> and that one will be on campus and then at and then the come first to your town hall. Church, that's right. Town hall. First right. Yes, yes. That's right. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Real quick, if a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family out of the house, is there a good number for someone to call to oh, learn surely, more surely. about the events? I see one, the 349-41. Right, yes, okay. that's the, um, the number into our center. And if someone wanted to visit a website, is that the coastal.edu yes, slash Jackson then, Center? Yes, that's Great. right. Good. Exactly. So 843 349 4149 or visit coastal.edu slash Jackson, Jackson Center. Jackson. We've just updated our website, so we'd be delighted Great. for them Good. to do that. We've got about 10 minutes, Claudia. Let's highlight some of the other events. I know the dates that they can call as you get closer to September and October to firm up. I know you've got some firm dates, but as we go into 2008, some of the dates may change sure. and the times may change. We're doing in January one that is going to be highly controversial. It's being done by two philosophy professors, Dr. Niels Rohut and Dr. Michael Roos, The Ethics of Charitable Giving. You're going to find one who's totally opposed to charitable giving Is that and one right? who's totally in favor of it. And both of them base it on ethical theory. Huh. So it's going to be very far wow. working. <laughs> I wish you'd give us a little, a, a little early and, primer on that. Um, yeah. And then they will repeat that one at the First Presbyterian Church. So uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Bobby won't like, sure know, Bobby won't like, like that, that or won't like that. Yeah. Well, he invited us. Good. No, I'm kidding. We did. Um, Is Walmart the right model for America uh -huh. at the Presbyterian Church. That's and it was interesting. Packed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Bobby better liked was. that. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have a series we call Coffee and Ethics. And Coffee and Ethics, we go into a coffee shop here. Uh, we did use the living room, but unfortunately, oh, Diane closed yeah, it. I know. So we're looking for another location. East of Chicago we probably might serves think a about little that. Uh, uh, We might coffee. think yeah. about that. Yeah. And Dr. Dennis Earl, again, is he's a philosophy professor, is very anxious to do um, consumer ethics, consumer slash consumption ethics. Yeah. And, and that's a, um, a more informal so, sort of meeting, and yeah. has, we've had animal, um, is it right to eat the animals you love? <laughs> and that was fireworks. And so um, the coffee and ethics takes on a little bit different, it's more intimate, and takes on a little bit different um, feeling. That is tremendous, mm -hmm. Claudia. Well, I hope you'll let the Herald, I'm sure all area newspapers and oh, TV stations would love to help promote those issues. Love I think it. a lot love of people would be interested in both the ethical aspects yeah. of the benefits of charitable giving, but also the issues that some yes, would take it's, on it's with, quite uh, astounding. with providing uh, resources mm -hmm. uh, charitably. Uh, and I, I need to say that all of these are free and open to the public. Oh, great. All I was about to the ask the cost. The tea is free? Yeah. The tea is free? <laughs> yeah. Do you serve anything with the, the tea? tea or? Oh, whatever yeah. cookies are on sale. Oh, good. Yeah. Some cookies at Walmart. No, I won't say Walmart. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then our um, culminating event for the academic year, we bring in a visiting ethicist. We've had incredible visiting ethicists, and this year I am excited and delighted that we're bringing in Dr. Robert Audi, who is probably the foremost philosopher in America right now. Is that right? And has, has taken in his retirement a chair in business ethics at Notre Dame. 
Yes, just one of the nicest people. I am fortunate to also say that he's a friend of mine, and I'm very honored to be Great. able to say wow. that. And that is um, free and open to the public. They've been very successful, these lectures, and all of that information will go out. It's, it will be in April. That will be our last. Did you call him a philosopher, Claudia? Mm -hmm. You called him a philosopher. You know, we think about philosophers oftentimes as no longer with us, as being dead. Yes. And do they Isn't have to die true? to become a philosopher, whether it's a Plato like the artist or question, Aristotle or Machiavelli or somebody like that? In that instance, you think they've passed away? Or an artist, absolutely. Yeah. Will their works other we have than some Warhol exciting be really philosophers in America today? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, Dr. Peter French, um, who will come, I hope, year after this. Right. Dr. Dr. Robert Aaron, they're very Are a lot there of some exciting universities, for done. instance, that have some well known folks, or is it just spread out all over? I mean, is there a Generally, there, you'll have some larger universities like Harvard and right. Notre Dame right. and um, those types of schools. Some of these are people are retired and right. they are very willing to share their knowledge. Yes. They're quite grand. Yeah. That's tremendous. Yeah. And, you know, as you, I, we, it's, I guess folks would tend to think oftentimes of folks in the past because yes. that may be who. That's they Absolutely right. College. Absolutely did, did right. Did you have something that you focused on, a subject or some topics, whether it was teleology or uh, deontology? I've always been interested in ethics, why we do good in society. Right. And so um, I think through most of my studies, I worked through that, even on the undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I enjoyed, I, I went through existentialism and, Ooh, oh wow. yes, I was a raging existential. I've been a raging almost yeah, everything. I, <laughs> We don't want to even ask that, what that means exactly for viewers. Someday I'll come back. Sure, that's right. We'll have to get you back. And, um, and, but it, through all of that, all of my marches, etc., mm -hmm. I was always concerned about why we do good in society and the ethics of society. My um, teaching was in business ethics. Aha, uh -huh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Sherry had written a couple of great questions out here, just trying to think of that, and one tied in. You know, it covers so many disciplines nowadays. Computer. You just said business ethics. Right. Right. Of course, ethics and law, and the, the particular interest for you was business ethics. Yes, it was. It was, but the underlying interest was also right. about how we learn in society to act, how we make our decisions. What is that all about? Why don't I sit right here right now and shoot you? Ooh, Ooh. wow. Yeah. yeah. Really, and why did I come today? I think, um, I think watching us and studying us, um, it's very interesting to watch these sort of underlying values go from generation to generation, but sometimes they're manifested in different ways. Mm -hmm. So you hear people say, and I've probably said it myself, oh, things are so different now. Well, they're probably not. Yeah. We're probably still operating off a basic um, set of principles, but we manifest them differently. That's interesting. We were at a Boy Scout event recently, about 10 days ago. Heard the uh, the recipient of this distinguished citizen award saying that he and his family would leave town and wouldn't lock the doors. And we hear that all the time. And there's that mindset that things have just changed dramatically. Yes. Have they changed? I wonder if they ever really did lock their doors when they you leave know, for a week. My, I never saw my parents lock a door in Charleston. When you would leave for extended periods of time, never locked. I don't locked? know. I just never remember a right. lock. Yeah. I never remember anything being locked up. I, yeah. I never remember being frightened. Yeah. Uh, have things changed? There are more of us, Greg, a lot more of us. Yeah. There are fewer um, supplies. There are fewer resources. Right. And so that balance causes um, different manifestations, I think. Right. If you read Forbes magazine, you know that the, um, the area between the haves and the have-nots has gotten larger and Much larger, larger. And yes. Mm -hmm. And so when these people are very poor and they see the very wealthy, that's a, a hard thing to understand. Mm -hmm. So all of this, I think, is part of our growth. And we just need to learn, or we need to decide how we're going to handle it and it's a hard decision that could be a real issue I, some of those topics you were talking about I wonder if there's some ethical issues in parenting you know when you really oh. think about ethic, ethical issues for parents sure. and sure. how they, and you're uh, a parent and you know I that I am of a young daughter <laughs> and I try to think about issues you yeah. know uh, ethical issues uh, stuff yeah. that I should or shouldn't do oftentimes catching myself as I speak something and then hear it quickly repeated yes. out of my daughter's yes. mouth and think golly I Did gotta I be careful yes, I, I could have said that yeah. <laughs> no, 
yes. some, some real sure. issues. Sure, that's a good that's a good topic. I'll take it back and see if we can find somebody to do a TN ethics on it. And that could good. be very interesting. We'll take I know all there, recommendations. There are always departments in other places that would think about family values. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're probably out at Coastal. There are places that you could turn right. to for family values, and mm -hmm. it may not be the Jackson Family Center there, but at the same time, I'm sure there's some overlying Oh, yes, absolutely. There. But that's good, and I'll take it back, and we will push it around and see if we can do a TN Ethics in your honor. D listen <laughs> up. That's a, did you ever share with family issues you were doing in the classroom, Claudia? Did, did you ever I ever get into that with your mother? Did you talk to your own yeah, family about so what was going on in the classroom? I am very that I am the middle child, yeah. and my younger brother and my older brother are both academics. So yes, yes, we talked a lot about it. And it's yeah, it's exciting wonderful. dinner time yeah. conversation. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> most definitely. That's fantastic. So yeah, I was very fortunate that way. My parents were lovely about encouraging us to develop our interest, and they were very supportive. So yes, we had great. And my parents were very intelligent people. That's wonderful. I'm sure we run out of time. Claudia, thanks so much thanks. for being with us yes, this morning. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely. And hope to see you again. I sure hope so. Come out so. to Coastal. Yes, we'll do that. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Claudia McCullough coming up next. I love this quote from Dr. Ron Engel. This center, in its purpose and its scope, is unique to our region. What a treat to think about a big geographical area in a little place in Conway, South Carolina that's reaching out to so many outside of the area, bringing in amazing speakers from all over the country and also local speakers, local professors who are reaching out not only there in Conway but down at Litchfield and at the, at the town forum there at First Presbyterian Church. What a great opportunity. You can learn more not only from the tea and ethics but also coffee and ethics through the Jackson Family Center for ethics and values. Take the time to learn more. Give them a call at 843-349-4149 or you can go online to www.coastal.edu slash Jackson Center. Whether it's the ethics of charitable giving or many of the other tremendous topics that Claudia just spoke about, take the time to learn more. Check out their website, coastal.edu slash Jackson Center.